All right, good to see everybody here this evening. Welcome to the midweek service, and uh, glad you made it to church tonight. And uh, take a songbook. Let's sing together, shall we? Turn over to 510, number 510. Here's good news. Whosoever surely meaneth me. Amen. 510. Let's stand together and we'll sing it. Brother Bob will lead us. I'm happy today and the sun shines bright. All right. And if you're happy, notify your face you are. And let's sing it together. I am happy today and the sun shines bright. The clouds have been Good singing tonight. Good to see each of you here in church. I'm glad we have a whosoever gospel. Amen. And uh, we can take it to every creature. And uh, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. And uh, that's good news tonight. I uh, appreciate you being in church this evening. Looking forward to what the Lord has for us tonight. Let's open with prayer, shall we? Father, we do bow before you this evening. We thank you for another midweek service that you brought us to. Thank you for each one that's made their way out and uh, here this evening. And I pray, God, that you'd meet with us tonight. Uh, Lord, do you give us exactly what we need? You know what we need better than we know what we need. And so, Lord, meet the need of every heart, please, and be with the children's classes as they meet during this time as well, and speak to their hearts, and be with the workers, and may your will be accomplished in each of their lives as well. Lord, may you honor our time together here this evening, and may Christ be exalted in all we do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Let's turn over to 150 in your hymnal. 150, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. 150, let's sing that first and last together. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy. I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need him is always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to import. You ask me how I know he lives. He Oh, baby. 
This evening's missionary message is from Sam and Rhoda Wilson, ambassadors to the Jewish people. It is such an honor and privilege to serve the Lord. As a boy growing up in Ohio, I could never imagine the plans God had for my life. Even today, I'm frequently amazed at God's leading in our lives. I just returned from a three-month ministry trip to Ukraine. It was an intense time of sharing Christ with the lost, strengthening local churches, mentoring missionaries, and preparing for our major ministry campaign this fall. My heart overflows with joy as I see the Lord opening doors and igniting hearts to take the gospel to the Jewish people in these last days. Rhonda and I were privileged to serve the Lord for 14 years in Moscow. Then we thought we would serve there all of our lives, but God had other plans. He sent us to Israel. When we moved to Israel, we knew that Israel's opposition to missions would make it nearly impossible to stay long term. Still, it was painful when, after three years of ministry, we were forced to suddenly leave Israel. For the last couple of years, we've endeavored to obtain a visa that would enable us to return to serve full-time in Israel. Meanwhile, we've been very busy reaching out to the Jewish people in Atlanta and in Ukraine and continuing to serve the church in Israel from Altar. It has now become unmistakably clear that God has once again changed our direction. Problems with visas, with Rhonda's health, have forced us to accept the door to a full-time ministry in Israel has closed. Yet God has opened up an exciting door of ministry with great potential to take the gospel to multitudes of Jewish people. Thus, we're announcing to all who love us, pray for us and support us that Rhonda and I are continuing to serve the Lord as missionaries, taking the gospel to the Jew first and also to everyone else our ministry base will be Atlanta, Georgia, where we are working to evangelize the 120,000 Jewish people of the Atlanta area. However, this ministry will reach far beyond Atlanta to cities, ac cities across America, to Ukraine and beyond. The goal of our ministry is to evangelize Jewish people. Ron and I have been sharing the gospel with Jewish people. Our efforts alone, however, do not begin to get the job done. As I teach and preach in local churches, God is calling Christians to minister to the Jews. We're developing light bearers, a ministry to group churches to minister to the Jewish people in their communities. The light bearers ministry inspires Christians to witness to Jewish people, when then trains, equips, and supports them in that ministry. We've already launched the light bearers ministry in Atlanta and in Ukraine. We're excited about the progress in Atlanta and are overwhelmed by the great response in Ukraine. Already churches in other cities are asking us to help them launch Jewish outreach missionaries, ministries, I'm sorry. We believe that light bearers will be used to raise up a multitude of Christians across America and beyond who are called by God, trained and dedicated to taking the gospel of the Messiah to the Jewish people. We're so thankful to each of you for your love, your prayers, and your support. We look forward to continuing to partner with you as we press forward in the ministry to which God has called us. Please pray for Atlanta, the light bearers ministry for many Jewish souls to be saved. Ukraine, for our team in Kervav, the ministry this fall in Kiev, Kervav, and Bala Tosfa. Israel, Messiah Baptist Tab Tabernacle in Tel Aviv, Pastor Daniel and Rachel Matthew and Zana, our family, Rhonda's health, Joshua, Daniel, and Kendall. Blessing Israel, Sam and Rhonda Wilson. Amen. Continue to pray for the Wilsons as they make that transition and uh, doing what they do. That was under, it was at a missions conference where Sam Wilson was speaking that, uh, Brother Moreland and his wife uh, surrendered to uh, what the Lord wanted them to do. So it's uh, that's that's a connection there uh, that I've always remembered, and uh, that that's a blessing. All right, get your prayer guide out, would you? Uh, do you have that handy? Anybody need one? Put your hand up in the air. The usher will get you one. Everybody got covered tonight. Good job, fellas. All right, and uh, we'll start with our coming events. And I need to say, right after the service tonight, we mentioned that teen activity up in Mansfield. The uh, the big one going to be Saturday all day. 
Uh, just need to have a, a meeting. Any interest at all, parents and teenagers, uh, you go right to the conference room right after service tonight and uh, get the information from Brother Andy. He'll be here, and uh, you can meet with him right afterwards in the teen or in the conference room downstairs. All right, that looks like a great, great time there in Mansfield on Saturday. All right, and then. Um, the coming events, of course, pray for tomorrow night uh, down at the CRC um, in Orient. Had uh, 40 there last week and had nine receive Christ their Savior and uh, two graduates of the course. And I uh, had a good night down there. And then, of course, Friday night for Are You Here uh, at the church. And uh, God's doing some good things in Are You on Friday nights. Uh, all together between the adults and the, the children here last Friday night, I think we're right at 49 uh, almost 50 people, and uh, it's really, uh, God's doing some good things there. So we appreciate your prayers for that. Saturday morning, we'll be out at London, number 13 there on Saturday morning, and uh, that's a, a good group of guys there doing uh, good, making good progress on the lessons, and uh, we appreciate you continuing to pray for that ministry, the soul winning and bus visitation at 10 a.m. Uh, right here at the church, and uh, going out to uh, give the gospel here. And then don't forget, uh, one week from tomorrow, we'll start our missions conference. But next Wednesday night, uh, Brother Kiefer will be here. And uh, the Kiefers have been in Brazil. He and his wife will be here. And uh, they've been there, I'm, I'm going to say, 30 years. So I think that's pretty close. And this church has supported them for almost all that time, I believe. And uh, we'll find out. It's my first time to meet them and uh, see them since we've been here. He'll be here Wednesday evening, right during this service, and uh, he'll be um, give us an update and kind of letting us know what the Lord's been doing through their ministry. And then Thursday night, we'll start the conference. Now, Thursday night and Friday night, it'll be 6.30. We'll have somebody present each night, and Brother Jarvis will speak each night, okay? Uh, some of you ladies, if you noticed on your nursery schedule, you have part one and part two. That way, you, you, you may work the first part, and then you'll come in for the second part of the service. Or you'll be in the first part of the service, then get to go out for the second part of the service. But uh, you'll get you'll get some of the service every night. All right, so uh, that's how that'll work. And then of course, six thirty Thursday, six thirty Friday, then Saturday with the international dinner. Uh, is that five thirty? Five thirty on Saturday. And the sign up sheet for that is downstairs. Uh, make sure you see that. And then if you want to be part of the parade on. Um, Saturday the 19th that you want to walk along and uh, pass out the John and Romans. Uh, Bob gave me word just for coming up here. They're, uh, let him know they're on the cutter ready to be cut and they'll be loaded up and uh, Brother Adam Jarvis is driving up tomorrow and he'll pick them up and bring them up to us. Uh, so that'll save us the shipping charges. Amen. And uh, so that'll be good and we'll have those in hand ready to pass out along the parade route. All right. And that's that's going to be good. That's going to be on the 19th of September. All right. Now, on the other requests here, if you'd write down, just jot down, Brother Van Gelder handed me this. Uh, uh, it was on the pulpit up here. Uh, his brother, Wayne, passed away uh, earlier this week in West Virginia. And uh, he would appreciate prayer for the family of his older older brother, I believe you said. And um, so we appreciate you praying for his family during this time of his uh, Brother Wayne's home going alright and then uh, the other requests that are mentioned there under spiritual growth and restoration on the inside we have the praise reports of course uh, the numbers down at the prison and welcoming uh, Dr. Dave and Terry Yoder and the fellowship of our church and uh, continue to pray for the different church ministries and requests that we have there and then those on our health list and uh, battling the different health needs that we have we pray for those in authority uh, scripture teaches us in First Timothy 2 that we should do that, and I hope you're faithful, you're faithful to do that and pray for these in authority. Praying for our military and those who protect us, praying for these battling cancer, and then, of course, praying for these on the salvation list that uh, God will lead someone in their life whom they'll listen to and uh, will be faithful to give them the gospel uh, that they'd believe and be saved, all right? The unreached people groups, the list for this week, and we want to pray for those folks and then of course our missionaries tonight <clears throat> and that's uh, highlighted by the Wilsons who will be ministering to the Jewish people uh, in Atlanta and in the Ukraine okay so uh, let's 
uh, prepare to go to prayer tonight. We're, we're glad to have Brother Moreland in the service this evening. We don't always get the Moreland's with us and uh, as they travel, but it's honored to have Ron, and I want Ron to come and lead us in our prayer this evening, if he would, please. And um, God's doing great things with the 1040 International Ministry that Brother Moreland has, and we're excited about it, and uh, I want him to lead us in our prayer this evening. All right, Brother Ron? All right, let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, it's an honor to come before your throne this evening, Lord, and it's an honor to be in your house. And Lord, we thank you for being in a country that's still free, that we can still uh, worship you freely, honor your name, and remember what you've done for us on that cross, Lord. And Lord, we look so forward to your coming someday, and we know that the timing's right, and Lord, we just ask that you'll help us and uh, mend our hearts to get us prepared Lord, uh, share your salvation, share the gospel with others that have never heard and those that are uh, seeking uh, salvation. Lord, tonight, Lord, I ask that you be with uh, Brother Van Gelder's family, Lord, with the passing of Wayne. And Lord, we just ask that this time will be used in a mighty way that uh, people will come to you and know who you are. Lord, we just ask that you'll heal their hearts and give them understanding and wisdom to see who you are. Lord, we thank you so much for uh, the ministries here at the church and especially the RU program and what you're doing um, now at CRC and out in London and um, even here in the church. Lord, what a wonderful ministry it is to see the people that are tied down with or are bound with sin or addictions or whatever it could be, Lord, that um, just going through the Bible and seeing who you are, Lord, you've uh, found a way for us to get out of those um, out of those chains, Lord, to come to you. Lord, we just uh, ask for, to be with those that are just trying to grow spiritually. Lord, that some of them may be a backslidden or just kind of falling away, Lord. Lord, we just ask that you'll be with those and give them restoration, Lord, and let them um, and just empower their, their spirit, Lord, to get them back here to church where they can be loved and we can love up on them. Lord, we ask that you be with those that are in health today, Lord, that are sick, um, some of us are fighting allergies and sinus colds, and Lord, as the weather's changing, and um, Lord, there's some that are dealing with heart issues, um, maybe diabetes, maybe cancer. Lord, um, all those things can be used to glorify your name, and everything that's happening in our lives, all the trials, tribulations, can be used to glorify your name. Lord, I just ask that you lift us up and take us out of this miry pit, Lord, that we so often get into. Lord, that we can see who you are and that you're able to lift us up and put us on a solid foundation. Lord, we also pray for our, um, our president, for our Congress, our government. Lord, for those that are running for president, Lord, we ask that you'll give us the uh, president that you want us to have, that you need to have in that place, Lord. And we know that there's no changing of the prophecy of the Bible. There's no changing of what lies in store in the future, and we understand that. Lord, we do ask that you'll give us um, someone who loves you, who respects your word, who respects um, just religion in general, because this is a land of freedom of religion. But Lord, we ask that you'll give us a good Christian person who loves you, and that you save their soul, Lord, that they'll give us uh, liberty and give us freedom. Lord, we also ask to be with those in our military. Lord, guard them, give them safety, put a hedge around about them. Lord, and there's so many that are still seeking who, uh, who you are, Lord, that we're praying for in salvation. Lord, help us to take this prayer list and um, every day pray by name. So those who um, will come to understand as you can work in their hearts and uh, to let them know and see who you are. Lord, we ask that you be with the Wilsons. What a great family. What a great couple they are. And they mean so much to our family. And I know how hard it is when the ministry and everything keeps changing and just because of visas and government. And, but, Lord, we, have to, we understand that those are things that you've put in the way, that you want us to move in a different direction. Lord, I ask that you'll be with Sam and Rhonda and um, use them wisely. Lord, help them with their health. Help them with their hearts, too, because I know it's hard when you have a heart for a people or an area and you're trying to get to and you can't get in there. Lord, I ask that you'll work in a mighty way in this ministry in, in uh, Atlanta and also in Ukraine, two places that desperately need you. 
And Lord, I just ask that you'll work with the Jewish people too to open up their hearts to see that all the prophecy that was in the Old Testament going through that, that it was you that they was talking about. And um, Lord, I just ask that you'll be with these unreached people groups. I know we looked at them and it just looks like the same names and the same country and same language, but Lord, we have to understand that these are, these are real people, ev new ones every week that need to know who you are. Lord, I pray that you will send somebody to, these, to this country or just to these people Lord, uh, so uh, your work can go on and your name will be glorified and magnified. Lord, I look forward to your coming. Lord, I look forward to the message tonight. I ask that you'll work in, in pastor's heart. Use him as, a, as a, a tool, as an instrument, Lord, to open up our hearts. Open up our hearts, our minds, our eyes and ears to hear your word today. Lord, I also ask that you be Brother Bob as he leads the singing. Lord, then as we, it prepares our hearts to hear your word, to hear your message. Be with this church, um, be with my family here in this church, and I'm talking about this whole church family. Lord, please be with them. Put a hedge around about them and uh, guide them, protect them, Lord, until you're coming. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Would you turn with me to number 506, please? 506, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Let's all stand together as we sing 506. On that first, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, Purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. Greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guest. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together.
This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. All is at rest. Let's sing that last together. When we get to the chorus, we'll have the pianist drop out on that last. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day. Everybody said? Amen. Good singing. You can be seated. Ushers will come. We'll get our offering tonight. Be prepared to give as the Lord has blessed you. And we'll ask God's blessing on our offering tonight. Father, we thank you for the privilege to give, and we pray your blessing on our giving now this evening. Lord, thank you for how much you have blessed us. And Lord, I pray that you would take care of the needs for our conference coming up. And, Lord, the needs of the different ministries that go on at this church, Lord, and we, we thank you for how you provide for those needs through the people of God in this place. And, Lord, we pray you'll bless this offering tonight, gift and giver alike. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Oh, 
goodbyes will there be spoken and time won't know anymore you'll always I'm longing for you and someday I'm looking now across the river to where my faith will end in sight. There's just a few more days to labor. Our Father, we bow before you in prayer as we come to the study of your word. And Lord, I pray that you would open understanding tonight. Lord, I pray that thy Holy Spirit would help us as we focus on the mission. And the Lord, I pray that you'll minister as only you can, speak to the hearts as only you can do. Be the master teacher here this evening, please. Help me as I bring the study and help each individual as they listen. I pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your Bible, if you will, and go to Matthew 28, a familiar uh, passage to us. I want to talk to you about missions this evening. It's Missions Month, and uh, it will be upon us next week. And I'm going to give you an easy acrostic, as they call it, for missions. All right? For missions. Matthew 28 is the last few verses is... Uh, Jesus speaking in verse number 18 Jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you and lo I am with you always, even unto the end of the world amen and uh, this is repeated as most of you know at the end of every gospel, and again in the first chapter of the book of Acts, five separate occasions, not just uh, the writer repeating what they heard Jesus say once, but on five separate occasions, he emphasizes this idea that we're to take the gospel into all the world. Uh, that's our responsibility, and, and we need to take the responsibility seriously. Uh, we have we have neglected that responsibility. I, it's it was sad. I was uh, talking to somebody this week. They were relating to me that the uh, Southern Baptist Convention, uh, because of the shortfall in missions giving, is bringing home 800 missionaries off the field. They have to recall 800 missionaries because they have no support. Uh, they're, they are that far behind uh, in the missions giving. That's tragic. That's tragic. Uh, we don't need fewer laborers. We need more laborers. 
And, and listen, that, that stems from simply us at home not understanding the, the importance and the value of missions. And so let's uh, give you some practical things this evening. I, uh, I read about a song leader who was asking the congregation to lead. He was leading the congregation in the song, uh, Till the Whole World Knows. And uh, he said, we're going to sing till the whole world knows. And he announced that number. And the little girl looked up at her mom and said, I think we're going to be here a long time. <laughs> if we're singing to the whole world knows, we'll be here a long time. Uh, but we, that, that's our job. And you say, well, that's, uh, that, that's impossible to, you know, if, if you saw the people groups that Brother Moreland had up on the banners here a few weeks ago, you, you look and say, man, it's impossible to get all that. But I'm reminded, with God, nothing is impossible. And with God, all things are possible. Uh, you underestimate the power of the gospel. And don't underestimate the power of God. Because God's able to accomplish what He's given us to do. And so, we're going to look at missions this evening. Now, I know there's, there's eight letters here, all right? And so, I'm not going to take a long time on each one, or you'll be here a long time. All right? So, uh, we'll try to be succinct and to the point, and, and give you something that you can hold on to, and that you can hang on to for missions. Number, number one, M, is the mandate of missions. The mandate of missions. Oftentimes, you hear that word mandate, and it's associated with politics, or an election, that uh, so-and-so got elected, and it was a mandate from the people, you know. Uh, and, and it simply means that they got, they got a lot of votes. They didn't just squeak in, all right? Uh, so they feel like it was a mandate. But the word mandate means, it means a command or an authorization to act in a particular way on a public issue given by the electorate to its representative. That's where we get to use in the lectern. But listen, it's a command, number two, it's a command from a superior court or official to a lower one. So when we have a mandate for missions, it's a command from a superior, that's God, to us to take the gospel to every creature. It is a command. And I think before we're ever going to give prayerful support or financial support to something, we have to believe in its importance and its value. If we don't think it's very important, if we don't think it's valuable, then we don't give it much thought. And listen, by the way, when it comes to investing in something in a spiritual realm, we want to make sure it's biblical. We want to make sure it's true to the values of the Word of God and its biblical importance. Well, if you believe the Bible, you have to believe the mandate that God gave us a mandate to preach the gospel to every creature. And that's our responsibility. And so, Jesus gave this, again, as He's preparing to ascend uh, back to heaven, and he, and he gives it to His followers. And by the way, notice again, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And so, he's, he's letting us know this is the plan that's in effect all the way through. It is the mandate. So be careful if you complain about missions. Because if you complain about missions, you're complaining about the very thing God has approved and God has commanded that we carry out. And you're going to be complaining against the plan of God. All right? So mandate, the mandate of missions is clear. Now let's go to the letter I. The I stands for the immediacy of missions. The immediacy, I'll help you, I-M-M-E-D-I-A-C-Y, all right? Immediacy. So what's that mean? Well, it means we live in a fast-paced world, and sometimes it's easy to procrastinate. I'm going to do that tomorrow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to that sometime. And we, we tend to put things off that we shouldn't put off. And oftentimes we give, we give attention to the things that bring momentary fulfillment and we oftentimes neglect the things that are of real value and the things we ought to take care of and they don't get the attention that they really deserve. In fact, things that are painful or not real comfortable to us, we tend to push those off and, and not give it the attention we should. And, and missions, if it's important to us, then we have to ask the Holy Spirit to open our eyes and open our understanding to the immediacy of the need. Do you remember when Jesus witnessed to the woman at the well in John chapter 4? 
And after she got saved, remember, she left her water pot, and what did she do? She ran back to the city, remember, and told all the people there, hey, come see a man that told me all things ever I did. Is not this the Christ? And boy, here they came. In fact, let's look there, all right? You're in Matthew. Let's go to John 4, all right? Look at John chapter 4. And the disciples have come back now, and she's gone back to the city. And now notice what Jesus told them in verse 35. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest? Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. What they're saying is, you know, yeah, I know the harvest is coming, or the harvest is four months from now. And Jesus said, no, lift up your eyes. What? I believe lift up your eyes and see these people streaming out from the city that this woman is told about Jesus. And here they come and say, look at the fields. Look at the, they're white, all those white heads, you know, those white turbans coming out there. And I think he said, there, it's white already to harvest. Here it is. The immediacy. Now is the time. Now is the day of salvation. And, and so we have to understand, let's, let's take the opportunities that are before us right now. I know that, that folks have taken the gospel. Listen, we have a great day to take the gospel to people. We have a great opportunity to take the gospel to people. Sometimes you, you heard the story of missionaries. Sometimes it would take them six, eight months to travel by a boat to get to different mission fields, depending on the distance. Now we can get there in just hours. Hours. And be ready to go. And be ready to preach the gospel. We can't, we can't live in our world and think that someday the harvest will come. Or someday we'll reap it. No, the harvest is now. The need is now. And not only abroad, but right here. The people need the gospel. And they need to be saved. We never know. Listen, we never know when Christ is going to return. I don't know. He may, everybody's saying, oh, it's going to be September 13th. This may be the last Sunday we'll have. Maybe he'll come back on Sunday. And that's, and hey, you know what? If he does, praise God. We'll go. But if that's it, then we've only got three days left, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, to get, get something done. Because we don't know when he's coming back. We ought to have an urgency to every day if we believe he could come today. But then we also don't know when people are going to die. We don't know when people are going to take their last breath. We don't know when, when people are going to be in a car accident. Somebody was telling me the other day, Brother Van Gelder, of course, his brother passed away. Someone was telling me the other day they had someone who passed away of a heart attack at 21 years of age. 21. That's unbelievable. But you know what? Boast not thyself of tomorrow. Thou knowest not what a day can bring forth. There's not one person here didn't one pain in the chest away from eternity. We don't know when we'll die, and the lost don't know when they'll die. We must get the gospel. There's an immediacy to the need. All right? So M is a mandate. I is immediacy. The next one is S. And S, I want to make the sacrifice of the missionaries. Now, there's no doubt about it. We live in what people call the terms of a shrinking globe <laughs> because of the Internet and the telephone and airplanes, and uh, there's... Uh, you, you, it's not quite the same that it used to be when you'd say goodbye to your loved ones knowing that you may never see them again. And, and I realize that in this day and age with, with uh, the different uh, electronic devices that you have, that you can have Skype and you can have uh, different ways to communicate, but you can at least see your loved ones and be able to talk to them and hear their voice where years ago you didn't even have that. You could write letters and it would be months between hearing from anybody. So in that sense, things have shrunk down. But can I tell you, there's nothing quite like having the person there in person. Uh, it's, it's, like, it's like the, how many of you ever, how many ever been at home and unable to get to the service and you've watched the service on the computer? Have you ever done that? All right. Boy, just like being in church, isn't it? No. It is never the same as being there in person. And, and, and while people say, well, let's just preach the gospel on the Internet, that's not the same as being there in person. 
And it doesn't carry the weight of a person coming and giving them the gospel. There's a sacrifice that goes with the missionary. They say goodbye to family and friends. And, and the old timers, as I say, they, they, the old timers put all their belongings and they didn't send a container over. They put whatever belongings they had in a coffin. They had their coffin built and they sent it over. And that's where they kept their possessions. You know why? They never intended to come home. They would die on the mission field. Bury my heart on the mission field. And that's where they would go. And that's what they intended to do. That's the sacrifice of the missionaries. So missionaries who will dedicate their lives to reaching one village, our one country, our one people group. And sometimes if you're the kind of person that wants to, to see thousands of people saved and you look at somebody who's just focusing on the, the one people group, that, that Etau uh, video that we saw um, from Papua New Guinea. You know, there's a fellow who went and spent months just, just working with that one tribe of people. And, and, and it took him, I, I'm not sure how long it would have taken him, six months, eight months, to finally see 300 and some of those people receive Christ as their Savior. And uh, how thrilled they were when they got saved. It was, remember that celebration? It was a celebration like, uh, like, like, like we act when our football team wins. Only they get that excited over, they, they realize my sins are forgiven, I have eternal life, and I'm on my way to heaven. And they got excited. And, and, and listen, but, but people will spend their whole life. I, I said the other night with Brother Moreland, you know, you're, he's, he's laying the groundwork for Scripture in the Dugan language in, 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 there in Kyrgyzstan. And listen, that, that's, a, that's a work that may take 20 years or 25 years to get done. I, I, I would pray it could get done sooner. But listen, when you're translating God's Word, that's not something you want to rush. That's not something you can, you can be sloppy with or be careless with. It's a very meticulous work, and it's, it has to be a very accurate work. And, and just based on other, other translation projects, and you understand, uh, Brother Ron's already 68, and 25 years would make him real old. I'm kidding, Okay. He's really 65. And, um, but, you know, we, most of what, but listen, what he's going to do is not something that he may see fruit from. Oh, he'll, he'll do his best to get the gospel to some now. But you know who's going to see the fruit of his labor if the Lord tarries? Hmm? These guys down here will. Because of his sacrifice, they'll see success. Anywhere on the mission field, when you see somebody succeed, you mark it down, somebody sacrificed without succeeding. So those who came later could succeed with very little sacrifice. That's how it works. The sacrifice mission. But I've never yet a missionary, I've never yet, I've yet to meet a missionary who have sacrificed and left all and given everything to a people group or to a country and trying to reach people with the gospel that regretted it or felt like they, they wasted their life. Not one. Not one. An old missionary couple, many of you have heard this, they, they were returning after working in Africa for many years, and they were returning back to New York. As the trip began, they discovered they were on the same ship as President Teddy Roosevelt, who was returning from one of his big game hunting expeditions. No one paid any attention to them, and they watched all the fanfare that accompanied the president's entourage. And passengers who kept trying to catch a glimpse of the president as the ship moved across the ocean, the old missionary said to his wife, something's wrong. Why should we have given our lives in faithful service to God in Africa all these many years and have no one care a thing about us? Here's a man who comes back from a hunting trip and everybody makes much over him, but nobody gives two hoots about us. His wife said, honey, you shouldn't feel that way. He said, I can't help it. It just doesn't seem right. Well, the ship docked in New York, and sure enough, a band was waiting, and they started playing uh, the, the, a song for the president, and uh, they, people waiting, and of course the papers were there, and light bulbs were flashing and pictures, and then no one noticed the missionary couple. They simply slipped off the ship, disappeared into the crowd, found a cheap motel on the east side, and hoping the next day they'd find something they could do to make a living in the city, and 
That night the man's spirit broke. And he said to his wife, I can't take it. I don't think God's treating us fairly. She said, well, why don't you go to the bedroom and tell that to the Lord? And she said a short time later he came out of the bedroom. Now his face was completely different. And his wife asked, what happened, dear? And he said, well, the Lord settled it with me. I told him how bitter I was that the president would have this tremendous homecoming and no one was even there to meet us when we came home. And when I finished, it was as though the Lord had put a hand on my shoulder and He told me, you're not home yet. You're not home yet. And that's so true. Listen, any sacrifice we make, Paul said... The sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. Not worthy. And well, there's nothing, that, there's no sacrifice. It was Livingston who said, no sacrifice can be too great for me to make for him. And so the sacrifice of the missionary. So we have the mandate, we have the immediacy, we have the sacrifice. Number four, we have the satisfaction of the missionaries. You say, wait a minute, preacher. You said sacrifice. How do you put sacrifice with satisfaction? How does that work? Well, missionaries, again, have a great satisfaction in doing the will of God. Did you know there's great satisfaction when you're doing what you know God wants you to do? When you're, there's great satisfaction in not just being in the will of God, but doing the will of God. Even though there's great sacrifices for a missionary, there's great rewards for a missionary. And don't forget that. Not only in the future, but also now. I tell you, they're just, there's a great joy. There's, there's missionaries, you understand, that, that are not... I've, you, you, you've, heard, you've heard some that come here that, that when they come home on the furlough, they almost dread coming to America. Because their, their, their children have grown up in a different culture and their children have grown up without all the materialism and the, 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 the awfulness, really, that, that goes on in America. Their children have been sheltered from that. And they almost hate to bring them back into this, this environment again. You see, they're, they're perfectly satisfied. Uh, when, when they live, how do you live on a mission field? How do you live there when you say, well, you know, we, we got electricity for two hours today. We got, we're able to get running water for a few hours today. You say, how do you do that? And by the way, with, with temperatures at times like we've had the last few days, not counting today, and, and you think, wow. But yet, you know what? They're completely satisfied. How is that possible? Because you're doing what God has called you to do. And that's the greatest satisfaction of all. When you know you're doing what God wants you to do. Do you know that satisfaction? You see, don't think. We, we, we probably for too many years have thought, oh, you, you surrender to God, you know, and He's going he's gonna to do His best to make it miserable on you. No, He's not. He wants you to do, listen, and He's going to call you to where He needs you to go. And listen to where He tells you to go and listen to what He wants you to do. But God isn't there. Listen, it'll be the happiest time of your life to surrender to God. I'm not saying it won't be scary. I'm not saying it won't be hard to step out by faith. But it is the, exactly what God wants you to do. You'll be, the, you'll be satisfied. There'll be a peace that passes all understanding. That'll keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. The will of God, what it's all about. Doing God's will for your life. That's good for, hey, that's good for the missionary. That's good for the person at home, too. You ought to be, hey, but if it's God's will for Brother Moreland to go to the field and his family, you know what? You ought to be just as much concerned about God's will for your life as he's concerned about God's will for his life. You ought to be doing what you do because it's the will of God. And you know it's what God wants you to do. And God, I think God wants us to be happy in the service of the King. Nobody ought to be a miserable Christian. We ought to serve the Lord with what? Gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. Somebody, th some of us think that's madness, huh? Or sadness. 
grumbling and complaining. No, no, no. God says, man, if you're serving me, happy. When the Queen of Sheba came to see Solomon, she said, man, happy are your servants. These people love what they're doing. And she was amazed at that. Hey, do you think she, as the Queen of Sheba, had anybody working for her? You know she did. Did she have servants? Absolutely. And she goes, I don't see them happy like your servants are. Man, their their servants are happy. And she observed it. And she goes, man, they told me how great you were, but the half hadn't been told me yet. It didn't come close to it. Ought to be somewhere where people come and say, hey, these people are happy serving God. And they enjoy what they do. You knock on somebody's door on a Saturday and you're, you're, you're out giving out the gospel and they think, they think that, that, that you're getting paid to do that. No, 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 no. We're doing that because we love Jesus. And we love serving Him and we love taking the gospel to people. We're concerned about you. Make sure that we're happy in the service of the King. All right? So we come to the next letter, which is I again, M-I-S-S-I. And, and this is the individuality of missions. The individuality of missions. Anybody involved in missions, anybody involved really in the work of the Lord, done anything for God, they'll always tell you, never forget the value of one. Never forget the value of one. Jesus knew what it was to speak to thousands, but He also knew the value of stopping to talk to just one person. We see many examples of it. That woman at the well we talked about earlier, He stopped to talk to her when nobody would have. One person. Nicodemus came to it at night, and Jesus talked to one person. That Zacchaeus was up the tree, but Jesus stopped and addressed him and talked to one person. The crowd was thronging him, but that woman came up behind him and touched the hem of his garment and was cured of her issue of blood that she had for, yea, many years. And Jesus stopped and had a conversation with one woman. Never lose the value of one. Individual. Individuals get saved. I'm not a, uh, I think it's good to have big meetings and big crusades, but let's not miss the fact you win people one by one one by one, investing in somebody's life. You know, there's many people in this world, they feel like they're just one in a mass of people. And, and to take, when, when, they, when they see that somebody cares, and somebody takes notice, and somebody will take time to talk to them, it goes a long way. It makes a big difference. Jesus is still about the one-on-one -on -one approach. Remember, years ago, um, had an opportunity. A fellow came, and this wasn't at this church; it was a different church I was at. And he wanted to go to a college campus and witness. Well, he was a—he's one of the—I uh, guess I don't know what you—I call it street preacher or something like that. He—he he went to the campus. He stood up on a planter. They had big planters where people would sit, you know, and then had big trees in it, and he stood up on there and just started screaming. The Bible says in Isaiah 61, your wickedness has come up before me. Man, he just let her in, man. And of course, this is college kids. And there, it was so, it was so funny to watch, because I was standing there for a little bit, you know, watching them, and, and people would be walking around, you know, and they'd look up at him, and <laughs> they, they, they'd walk clear out of the way that way. And, and everybody was like a, like a repellent, you know what I mean? And I thought, you know, I'm just going to walk over this way. And I walked over and sat down on a planter beside a young man who was there. Started talking to him, found out he was a freshman, away from home for the first time, 18 years of age. Engaged him in a conversation, started talking to him. He wasn't saved. Asked if I could take the Bible and show him how he could know for sure. If he died, he'd go to heaven. And he said, that'd be fine. And got to go through the plan of salvation with him and he bowed his head and prayed and asked Christ to be his Savior. Gave him some assurance of his salvation and gave him some information about the church and I was just getting up to leave when I saw the campus police with the guy I came with escorting him down the, the way and so I just kind of followed 
I like Peter followed afar off and uh, <laughs> followed him to the parking lot. But, but you understand, and I'm not opposed, listen, I'm not opposed to a street preacher, but I think there's nothing more valuable than one-on-one. One-on-one giving somebody the gospel. One-on-one telling somebody you care. Individuality of the missions. One young man was walking along the beach at dawn, and he noticed an old man ahead of him picking up starfish and flinging them into the sea. Catching up with the man, the youth asked him what he was doing, and the old man said, that the stranded starfish would die if they were left until the morning sun. He said, but the beach goes on for miles and there's millions of starfish. How can your effort make any difference at all? The young man asked. The old man looked at the starfish in his hand and threw it safely into the waves and he said, it makes a big difference to this one. (laughs) The attitude is sometimes that, well, since we can't completely reach everybody... What difference does it make? It'll make a difference to this one. It'll make a difference to this one. It'll make a difference to everyone we can reach before it's too late. So the individuality of missions. O, O, the O of missions is the obedience of the missionaries. The obedience of the missionaries. Are you doing all right? You okay? We're almost there. We only got N and S to go after this one, all right? You okay? If you help you out with your spelling there in case you're having difficulty. Before a missionary ever serves on the field, they've surrendered to be obedient to the command and the call of God. Surrendered and obedient, listen, not to a board of missions, not to a group of people in need, but in obedience and submission to a God who knows exactly who he wants in every situation. And by the way, at what point in life he wants them to be there. God has who he wants there and he has the right time for them to be there. And he is in control of all that. And so God calls people, regardless of their abilities, regardless of their talents, regardless of even their burden. Because when He calls, He equips. He will give you what you need. Moses tried all the excuses, remember? God took care of them all. The same was true with those who listen to the call of God today. You have to be around. You really don't want to be around a person who... God has touched their heart to go and they haven't gone. We'll talk Sunday morning about a missionary named Jonah who didn't obey the call of God to arise and go. He ran off the other way. How'd that work? How'd that, how'd that do for the guys in the ship that he got on? Yeah, nobody wanted to be around Jonah. And, and there's, there's a lot of folks, listen, there are many people in our churches today that surrendered when they were in camp as a youngster or a teenager at a camp or a youth conference and they surrendered to do what God wants and surrendered maybe to go to the mission field who are now, they met somebody, they fell in love, they got married, they have children, they're in church and they know they never obeyed what God wanted them to do. That's a sad place to be. That's a sad place to be. I told, told somebody. I, I can't remember who I tell anything to anymore. I don't know what that's a sign of, but it's a sign of something. And I used to remember what it's a sign of, but I forgot. And the, uh, we, we were going to put, uh, take these young men and, and any young ladies that surrender to God to do whatever God wants them to do or surrender to be a missionary, that we take their picture and we make a little wall down here in the foyer and we put their picture up there. So then everybody sees it. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to hold them to their calling. We're going to hold them to their decision they made for Christ. Say, hey, your picture's up there. What are you doing? Where where are you heading? What mission field did you... You you surrendered to go to the mission field. Are you preparing to do that? And not let them veer off and everybody forgot about their decision. Hmm? Everybody forgot about what they surrendered to do. And we shouldn't do that. We should help them and keep them online. Because I'm sure Satan would like to get them off track and go their own way. And so you don't want to be disobedient. 
You don't want to be disobedient. Their correct response when God calls is what Isaiah said. What did Isaiah say? Here am I, Lord. Send me. Hey, when, when God speaks to your heart uh, tonight or Sunday or next Wednesday or Thursday or Friday or sometime in that conference, will you say, Here am I, Lord. Send me. Or will you begin to make excuses like Moses did? Will you begin to make excuses like Jonah did? We begin to give them all the reasons why God couldn't possibly want you to go. God couldn't possibly want me to, to, to obey Him. No, no, no. I think, I think, listen, I don't, most of what you read about is I've been reading and studying, and I, I don't know how many messages on missions I've read in the last week or so, but so many of them, Brother Ron, is answering God's call. And, and I don't agree with that. I understand what they're saying. But we have a command. Why don't we just obey the command? Spurgeon said, you don't need a reason to go. You ought to have a reason not to go. You ought to have a clear calling of God that you don't go. And if you don't, then say, here am I. Send me. God will take a volunteer. Do you know that? God will take a volunteer. Is this on? Still good? Well, I said that and everybody bowed their head. I thought it was time to pray. I knew it was over. Anytime you see a missionary stand up here, you're seeing somebody who has surrendered and been obedient to the call of God, to the command of God, to do what God wants them to do with their life. You're seeing you're seeing probably an answer to prayer in somebody's heart and life. Do you ever stop and think when we take a missionary on for support, we're being an answer to prayer? Do you think when a missionary comes and presents, do you think they're praying for that church to take them on? I know they are. Huh? Praying. And when, you, when, you, when we take them on, that's an answer to their prayer. God working in our heart to say, let's, let's partner with them. That's an answer to prayer. And so it's, it's, a, it's a, a wonderful thing to see the obedience of missionaries. And by the way, that's all of us. Being obedient to what the Lord's called us to do. All right, let's go to N. The need. N stands for the need of missions. The need of missions. All the obedience in the world doesn't count for anything unless there's people who are willing and obedient to what God wants them to do and will support the missionary prayerfully and financially. Somebody said, well, listen, maybe God should have thought this out more. Why would He call somebody and, and command them to go and not put all the money in the bank account they need to go? You know why? Because God's put it in your pocket in my pocket. And he wants us to be a part of it. We're all in this together. And so God says, I'm going to provide. Hey, those first missionaries, Paul and Barnabas, sent out by the church at Antioch. Paul wrote to the church at Philippi, and he said, hey, when I was on, on my journey there, uh, nobody communicated with me as giving and receiving, but you did. He told that church at Philippi, you sent once and again to my needs. And Paul said, because of that, my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's a promise to a church that got involved with giving to a missionary. I can't tell you. Um, we, listen, I can't tell you the, the blessing that God has given to our church financially because of our emphasis on giving to missions. That sounds crazy. You think, oh, we can't give that much to missions. We'll take care of the home base. You know what? We give to missions and God takes care of the home base. It, it, it's been amazing. But you get in on God's... I tell you what, I want that. I want Philippians 4.19 promise. I want in on that. 
And I'm thankful that God has put a group of people here that they want in on that too. Because God supplies through you. And I hope that you've seen God work in your life personally because of that. Because God's been tremendous. And and that's the need of missions. God combines the effort of those who are going with those who are here that will will, will give and and, and to, to support those who go. You'll get that faith promise card. And that faith promise, listen, that's a promise that you're going to, by faith, by trusting God, you're going to give this amount every week. You don't, listen, let me tell you what it isn't. It isn't, well, if God gives it to me, I'll give it. That's not what that is. There's no faith in that. Faith is, I'm taking out of my account and I'm giving it and trusting God, He's going to supply it to me. That's faith. Well, I can't see it then. That's faith. Okay? And it's a faith promise. By the way, it's faith promise to God. It's not a faith promise to the pastor. It's not a faith promise to the church. It's a faith promise between you and God. If you don't keep that promise, that's between you and God. No one's going to call you. No, we don't even, we don't even keep the cards that get turned in. They get shredded and thrown away. We, we do it so we know how much is promised. And we record that, and that helps us know the missionaries we can take on for support and how we can help take care of needs. But, but that's going to be between you and God. And again, that is how God enables you. What's your faith in God? What will you believe God to do for you? It's not a tithe. It's over and above the tithe. It's over and above what, what, what is already belonging to God. Well, let's go to the final S, Okay. So we have missions, we have the, the mandate, the immediacy, we have the sacrifice, we have the satisfaction of the missionary, we have the individuality, we have the obedience, we have the need of the mission, and then S, and of course that's the Savior of the missions. The bottom line is it's not about money. And it's not about the missionary. And it's not about the churches. The bottom line is it is about Jesus. It is about the Savior. Jesus has given us the command to go into all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Nothing more, nothing less. If there's anything more added to that, man added it to it, not God. If it's less than that, man subtracted from it, not God. Christ crucified, buried, risen, and coming again. We're to go with the good news of the gospel. So many people have never heard, not one time, of Jesus Christ. Charles Malik is a former Lebanese ambassador to the United Nations. He was asked, what has been the greatest American contribution to the rest of the world? Has it been money? Has it been food? Has it been medical skill? Has it been military might? Has it been industrial know-how? Here was his answer. The greatest thing to come out of America has been the American missionary effort. The quiet, selfless men and women who have left the comfort and security of their homeland to bring the gospel of Christ to less favored nations. That's a great, great testimony. Jesus never said, keep it to yourself. He never said, now don't go tell anybody this. Just the opposite. We ought to do our, be, be doing our best to let the whole world know that Jesus came, that there's a Savior who died for their sin, was buried, and He rose again, and He's living. And listen, He's able to save all those that come unto God by Him. What great... I I can't ever get out of my mind those people when the light broke through that Jesus paid for their sin debt and they can believe in Him and they're forgiven and the joy that was on their face and the excitement that was in their heart. Can you imagine? There's billions like that in the world. Billions. We need to hear about Jesus Christ. Missions. The heart of God. Let's let's keep our heart 
where his heart is. Amen? Let's stand together. We'll have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray you'll take the truth now this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the power of your word. Thank you, Father, for the command of Christ. But Lord, remind us that this is the plan of God. This is, there is no plan B. There's no fallback. If we do not get the gospel to the ends of the earth, then they'll never hear of Jesus multiplied millions billions will die and go to hell God keep the mission on our heart help us to begin here in Jerusalem and go out through Judea and Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth help us to be obedient to the command that you've given to us Father, I do pray for these missionaries that will be coming our way. I pray, God, you give them safety as they travel and prepare their heart. Prepare Brother Jarvis's heart. You'll give him just the messages that we need for this time to challenge us and to be an encouragement to these young missionary families that are going to be here. May you put a love in our heart for these servants of God. May we honor them and help them and encourage them. May we be a great blessing to them. Father, we commit it all into your hands. And Lord, we pray you'll dismiss us with your care and make us mindful you go with us from this place and that when we walk out the doors of this building, that we're on the mission field. May we preach Christ to each one we see and may they see Christ in us. Help us to see individuals and not just masses of people. And I'll thank you for it. Lord, we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing, isn't he wonderful? Wonderful, wonderful, isn't Jesus my Lord? Wonderful. Uh, isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus my Lord? Wonderful. Eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's word. Isn't Jesus my Lord? Wonderful. God bless you. You're dismissed. Bill? Bill, I